And I thought my job was to introduce our next speaker, which is Irvin Jacobs. Our next speaker, basically, if you think about innovation entrepreneurship, uh, if you think about who defines or what defines San Diego, I think it'd be reasonable to say uh, Irvin Jacobs kind of captures it all. He wrote the book on innovation entrepreneurship. He wrote the book on creativity. He wrote the book on telecom technology, on information theory. And literally, he li literally wrote that book. In fact, I studied from that book. <laughs> so. But I want to talk about how nature plays a role in making UC, in the greatness of UC San Diego and in some sense in the greatness of San Diego. So back in the mid 60s, our great visionary founders had a great vision. They were after really high quality people and they discovered this young, freshly minted, maybe two years minted uh, PhD uh, at MIT named Irwin Jacobs and they want to recruit him. So in, they invite Irwin and Joan to come and visit, which they come and visit. Um, and they actually like the place, but they somehow, they, when they go back, they realize that they're Bostonians, so they just want to stay there. So they decide not to take, up, uh, take us up on our offer, and lo and behold, two days later, there's a big thunderstorm, a snowstorm, just like what happened in the last uh, few months uh, in the Northeast, and Irwin, God forbid, on the way home got wet, and he couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> and and he decided that he's not going to live there anymore, and I think he talked Joan into it. And I might have embellished the story a little bit, but not much, uh, <laughs> right? So the next day, he calls up UC San Diego and says, you know what, I'm in. So we send him the offer, and he's on our campus. And I can tell you, that single event of recruiting Irwin Jacobs and the single event of that snowstorm that made him change his mind and made him come here, I think changed UC San Diego, and we became we started charting our course towards greatness, and so did San Diego. I, I cannot imagine San Diego without Qualcomm. Uh, I think it has made an extremely big impact. So with that said, I want to hear, we all want to hear from Dr. Irwin Jacobs. Well. Step up. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pradeep. And Congratulations on the 20th anniversary of the technology transfer. Actually, I'll just correct that story a little bit. <laughs> I had been in Boston, Joan and I had been in Boston 10 years and seven years on the faculty there, so it was a little bit of a change to make. It was a rainstorm, not a snowstorm. <laughs> but the real decision point came when I came home soaking wet and Joan read to me a description of a very nice home. We had been looking around Boston for a home. I said, let's go see it tomorrow. She said, only one trouble, it's in La Jolla. <laughs> 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 so we decided that was fate and we would go along with it and it indeed has been a uh, wonderful time. We came here in 66, so next year I think that'll be 50th anniversary for us. Despite that, you probably can still hear a Boston accent, so my ear is apparently not too good as far as picking up the California accent. Otherwise, I think we've become real, real Californians. The um, campus at the time was still very small and um, was a very special time because we were recruiting lots of faculty, and so there'd be parties at various people's homes, and um, one, and I've told this story before, one of the parties was at Harold Urey's home, and I uh, went there, introduced myself as an electrical engineer, and he immediately grabbed me, took me to his window, which was looking out over La Jolla Cove, pointed to all the wires that were in the way, and said I had to do something about the wires. <laughs> And of course, at that time, I did not realize <laughs> that innovation indeed would lead to elimination of most of those wires. So that was indeed a, a useful time. There are a lot of connections that go back. Uh, one of the other issues, there were so few faculty and number of PhDs coming to add up to all the PhDs we have per capita now. And so we had to share and be on which was great experience, actually, on doctoral committees for different 
uh, majors, and I still remember one of them uh, was on neuroscience. I was able to learn a little bit about neuroscience and understand actually there was a little to do with communications because of the uh, fact that there is uh, some noise up there and signal and how do you get the signal out of the noise, et cetera. It's interesting that since then I became involved with SALK, which is very heavily involved with neuroscience, and now the university here is very much at the center of the brain project. So all these things have a lot of continuity. It's also good to see uh, three of the chancellors here, but I think I've served with all of the chancellors or been involved with all of the chancellors since, since the beginning, so my uh, time does go back quite a way. I taught here for basically six years and re uh, resigned to go and run Linkabit. We had started Linkabit a couple of years earlier as a day a week consulting company. I'm still a great believer in faculty consulting, but when I came out here from MIT, there were just many more requests for consulting than one person could handle. Mentioned that to two friends up at UCLA, and they said, let's start a company and share the consulting, and that's how Linkabit was born. And so it's not the way I think that we teach entrepreneurship these days and things you have to do. This was, as with many things, an accident and something whenever you get these opportunities, something you have to go and run with. Um, I've also told the story that I rationalized leaving academia and going into business um, by saying that over the years we had often faculty told the students that all this theory really would be useful in the real world, and this was an opportunity to indeed go and show it would be useful. So Linkabit did grow very rapidly. Uh, our focus was on innovation, trying to do things that weren't a little bit better, but a lot better if we could make them work, and luckily we were very successful in those efforts. I sold the company retired in 85 for three months, decided that wasn't much fun, and we started Qualcomm. And our, again, didn't have any products in mind, uh, knew that digital wireless would, in fact, keep growing, and indeed, it has kept growing much faster than we originally anticipated. But um, uh, it was just a chance to be able to work with some other good people and enjoy things. It was only a short time thereafter, so it started two companies and found that there were a lot of problems in doing, getting the bankers, the insurance people, the lawyers, everybody together to, to help with a startup. And so it was only a little time after we started Qualcomm that we also helped form Connect. And I think Connect has played a major role in helping lots of new and small companies here in the city grow. Qualcomm did grow. It's, uh, again, based mostly on kind of come up with new ideas. Benefited greatly from the fact that there are many wonderful students graduating from UCSD, that the engineering school here uh, has grown very rapidly, although uh, we have also obtained graduates from many other schools, including, I don't know if the name's changed yet, but IRPS. Uh, we, we not yet, okay. <laughs> um, so that uh, we've, we've benefited greatly from having a UCSD here. Unfortunately, the technology transfer office wasn't available in all of our early years. But since then, um, uh, I've been involved since retirement, uh, occasionally coming over. I guess originally there was something called the 50K Challenge. Now it's the UCSD Entrepreneur Challenge, I believe. 50K used to, I think, refer to the prizes. In any case, the opportunity to come over here and listen to some of the students or be involved with them in another way or involved with faculty or other people here on campus. And so we've had the opportunity to, in fact, invest in, I think, at least seven companies that have sprung up out of UCSD. And in each of the cases, they have all commented on how well the technology transfer did occur. 
and so that has in fact and i congratulate all of you from the office and those that help make the policy it has indeed been working very smoothly and a lot of great things are coming out and it's going to be fun to see all these companies continue to move ahead and grow we currently are now active with where am i it's over there someplace uh, a new medical school that's not school but hospital building uh, that's growing a health center and um, one of the things that we're looking forward to is seeing transfer of a lot of the research that's happening on campus and in the institutions around this mesa see that get transferred over to the uh, hospital very rapidly and so that's one of the things that in talking about supporting that new building and uh, uh, having three different uh, hospitals involved there actually they don't call them hospitals anymore but uh, that we uh, did stress that there should be a focus on technology transfer one of the things that is happening in the world these days as many of you probably know is that technology is beginning to play a role in helping monitor health uh, that there are various sensors and a lot of them being worked on here on campus a lot of sensors that are coming along that allow one to make measurements on the body send them to the cell phone which can then process a lot of the data send that on uh, to a network center that can make that information available and also be part of a big data set that uh, can indeed be analyzed so a lot of those changes are going along the, the, in, in the medical center there's now going to be one room that some of the patients on the way out can get instructions on some of that equipment they'll be using at home to monitor their health so that already is uh, uh, I think moving ahead in a very positive direction the other thing that um, I and particularly Qualcomm have been very pleased about being able to uh, support here on campus is Cal IT2 now called the local part is called Qualcomm Institute but uh, just from the concept to a description to now seeing how much is happening there and where faculty from most of the campus from different departments on campus are getting together coming up with new ideas and being able to in fact make new things happen so that indeed is very exciting so the first 20 years of technology transfer indeed have been obviously quite successful have allowed a number of companies to start up will bring back ben benefits to the university I suspect the next 20 years are going to be even more spectacular and it's going to be fun I hope to be here to watch it all happen <laughs> thank you